are the sons of God and heirs of God and co-heirs together with his son Jesus Christ. Father, we value what you've done for us. Oh God, your mercy brings joy into our heart. We esteem the work that Jesus has accomplished for that on that cross. We thank you and we sing about it. We rejoice because of it. And we worship you and thank you because of that wonderful sacrifice. If I'm speaking for you, put your hands together and say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I only have a few minutes to minister. Oh, what a testimony. What a testimony. Faith and Kimani. God bless you so much. It's so wonderful what God is doing. It's so wonderful. It is real. We have had testimonies of what God is able to do. And guess what? It is expensive to do crusades, but we will still do them. Are we together? We still do them. In fact, we are beginning a project to buy our own crusade sound. We are buying our own speakers. Of course, the last time you, you were there, you saw some of the things we went through in the crusade. Uh, uh, but we are getting our crusade sound. Amen. You don't seem excited. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, God said to us, go tell it. Go tell it. And we don't want to keep the news to ourselves. If it is that good, then you share it. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, so we will, we will be able to uh, escalate our missions. We will have more crusades. I don't know what this family would have given if there is anything the family would have given, the family of Kimani and the family of faith to get the mother healed and to get Kam uh, uh, Kimani healed, they would have done it. They would have done it. But there are things that can't happen any other way except by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is why we go out there to tell people about his love. So the next time we have a crusade, don't disconnect yourself. Amen. Yeah, do, do, don't, even if you don't have time, please send us. Amen. Please send us. Send us. Send us. Give us the means. Send us. Let us go out there and preach on your behalf. Praise God. And let the world know that there is a God that saves and a God that heals. Praise the name of Jesus. After the service, there is a, 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 an announcement that I would like to make. So kindly give, be patient, hang around. I would like us uh, to, to be able to hear that announcement. But now I just want to go to the word of God. I want to appreciate my wife, Pastor Pauline Gashero. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a wonderful wife. Amen. I would like also to acknowledge uh, the ministers, the team that works tires, tirelessly to make sure that things fall in place and uh, that everything goes on very well. Kindly rise to your feet. Those that are with me on staff and ministers, where are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Peter, are we together? Amen. Come on, appreciate them. Appreciate them. Amen. Amen. They bear the load of what it is to organize meetings and run around and, you know, and, and I appreciate you as your pastor. I truly, truly honor your labor of love. And on behalf of these wonderful people, I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for giving it your best. And thank you for giving it uh, 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 the excellence that you have given. Once again, as they sit down, appreciate them. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I don't have much time. I want us to go to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. That is where I want to read. Amen. Remove the meat a bit. Just decrease the, the meat a bit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. The Bible says, thank you. The Bible says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you can read that in the Amplified, I would appreciate if you can give it to us in the Amplified. The Bible says, the Spirit himself thus testifies uh, from verse 15. 
Um, for the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing, what does the spirit produce? Sonship, okay? Produces sonship in us. In the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. I want to look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, verse 4. Amen. There it is. We were buried therefore with him by the baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father. So we too might habitually live in and behave in the newness of life. Today I want to talk about uh, the sons of God. Somebody say I'm a child of God. An heir of God and a co-heir together with Christ. Do you believe that? Somebody shout again and say, I have full sonship. Praise the name of Jesus. That is what I want to talk about in the next few minutes. Now you need to understand as a way of introduction that the death of Jesus Christ did not make us children of God. The death of Jesus Christ does not make us a sons of God. What the death of Jesus Christ does is to remove sin, to get away curses, sickness, and diseases. So the death, by his death, he destroys the power of the one that had control and dominion over us. By his death, the Bible says, he destroyed the one that had the power of death. Are we together? The Bible says that he himself carried our sins in his own body on the tree. Praise God. The Bible says that all our sickness, our ch chastisement, our infirmity, he bore to take it away. The Bible says cast is the man that hangs upon a tree. For the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 that Jesus became the cast. He became the curse. So in his suffering, in his death on the cross, he was addressing the issue of sin, the issue of sickness, the issue of bondage, the issue of slavery, and everything that had held us captive. So he was disarming them. Um, my wife taught us about that the other day, so I don't want to go into that. So he was confronting fronting the powers of darkness, the powers that held us as a slave. He was confronting them and destroying them by his death, by submitting to the will of the Father. He was destroying everything that had held you a captive. Praise the name of Jesus. He was disarming principalities. And when he was buried, when he was buried on the third day, the Bible says he rose again, amen, as the firstborn from the dead. He rose again as the first fruit from the dead. He rose again as the firstborn among many brethren. He rose again and it is at that point of resurrection that the new creation began. Jesus is the firstborn of that new person. He's the firstborn of that new creation. He's the firstborn of his brethren. Praise the name of Jesus. And the resurrection from the dead. And that is why I read the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. That in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The function of God that was working you know, and operating was a fatherhood. That it is by the power. The power of the father. He did not say the power of God. He says the power of the father. Because at that particular time. That new species, that new creation, that kind of a person that carries God within them had been given legality to exist on the earth. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, by him coming up, you need to understand if Jesus had died and not rose again, salvation would never be possible. Hallelujah. Salvation would never be possible because what would he give the people who would be saved? Because by his resurrection, the same life, oh God, the same life, the same life. Somebody shout and say the same life. 
That is in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 in the Amplified that we have been made alive by the same life. The same life that is in the resurrected Jesus Christ is the same life that is in the believer. The Bible says there it is. No, chapter, uh, chapter 2 verse 4. Chapter 2 verse, verse 4. The Bible says that same life but God so rich uh, uh, is he in his mercy because of what? In order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Verse 5, he did what? Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcoming and trespasses, he made us alive. How? Together in fellowship and in union with Christ, he gave us the very life of Christ himself. The very life of Christ himself did not have the legality to dwell in a person before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But after the price had been paid, after slavery was defeated, after sin was defeated, now the people that come up with Jesus Christ in resurrection and by faith in him have the legal right and they are given the very life of Christ in them. I'll get together. Therefore, it is at the point of resurrection that the ability to become the children of God after sin has completely been destroyed and after curses have been broken and after the price had fully been paid and justice has been satisfied and wrath has been appeased and where their justification has been secured and redemption by his blood has been secured, he rose up again and in his resurrection we were raised together with him. And that is where we draw our right to become the children of God. That is how we are able to receive the life of Jesus Christ within us. That is why he, did, he had to go through the process of death. He had to pay the price because there is no way that God would come and dwell within us in our sin. That God would not reign over slaves. He wouldn't reign over people that were still under the control and the dominion of darkness. By the time we were transferred into his family, by the time we were transferred into the kingdom of the son of his love, we first had to be a the issue of sin and bondage, uh, the issue that held us captive had to be taken care of. Do you understand me? Therefore, when you believe Jesus Christ and you come into the kingdom, you don't come into the kingdom of God as a slave. You come into the kingdom of God as a son. Is it possible for you to be a slave son? Is it possible to be a slave and a child of God at the same time? Is it possible? It cannot. Even the story of the prodigal son teaches us when he came to his father, he was condemned. He was guilty because he had wasted the inheritance. He said, my father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And I am not worthy to be called your son. Consider me a slave. Consider me, me, uh, me a servant. And the father ignored that prayer. He stand to the servant and say, go and get me my gown. Go and get me the ring. Go and get me the sandals. Because it's not possible in the same house to, be a, to have a son that is at the same time a slave. So question time. What are you? What are you in the house of God? Therefore everything that declared you a slave had to first be addressed, be paid for, be taken care of. After he took care of that, that is when now we could become sons and children. And we together. Therefore, in his death, he was paying for what made you a slave. In his resurrection, his life is given to us. Given in the sense that you can carry it. You can have that life. He who has the son. You guys are getting shy. Why, why are you? Okay, to Tarudia, welcome to Konoapa. Sam, I believe. Christ lives in me the life I now live I live by the faith of the son of God 
I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. I am seated together with him in the heavenly places. I lack nothing. All things are mine because I have been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in Nairobi, that is in the Kenya, that is in the world, can ever be. I am a child of God. Because I am a child, I am also an heir. Call heir together with Jesus Christ. This is my story. This is my reality. This is who I am. And I am happy about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> One else, if you will. Somebody shout and say, I'm a child of God. It's something to be happy about. It's something to get excited about. I'm no longer a stranger. It changed my service. It changed the way I preach. It changed why I give myself in the church to serve. It changed why I go out into crusade. Because I'm not serving as a servant. In fact, I feel uncomfortable when people call me servant of God. It's only that I can't go keep in telling killer people it's evil, it's not evil. So sometimes I just... But actually, I feel uncomfortable. I'd rather to be, be called Mwana wa Mungu. <laughs> it looks better. That's more accurate. Don't you think? Somebody calling you servant of God and child of God. What's more accurate? Therefore, when you give, when you serve, when you sing, you're singing to your father. When you dance, you're dancing to your father. Today, I was here just, you know, marveling. I'm amazed. It's like all the time there's something else I see in God. And I was dancing here and I thought to tell people to come. I say, Apana, kuna saa inafika, inakuwa personal. Kuna wakati inafanyika, inafika, unaimba ni kama uko peke yako kwa bathroom. Buwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Because maybe what I'm seeing, you don't see it. Hallelujah. But I'm seeing that my slave life is totally gone for eternity. Yeah. That I will never bear the badge of a slave anymore. I will never be called a slave anymore. Now by right, by privilege, by the blood, by the death of Jesus Christ, I have been given the right to be called a child of God. And that is my current and eternal status. Hallelujah. Do you like the words? If you like it, you can say it. Somebody shout and say, that, that is, my is my current and eternal status. I am a child of God. Put your hands together and give him praise. Therefore, every believer, are you a believer? Every believer who has faith in Christ is a child of God. Because according to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, you become a child of God. How? By faith in Christ. Somebody shout and say, by faith in Christ. Faith. Hallelujah. Do you have faith? Have you expressed your faith? Yes, therefore, by faith in Christ. So, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Everyone who has had faith in Christ, who is born again, who is a believer, is a child of God. Equal rights. There is no one who is a child more than another. The difference is the revelation. The difference is the knowledge. The difference is what you have come to see from the word of God. You can have, even in a family, let's, you know, normally sometimes you have in a family several children. And there is one who, has a, who feels they are loved. But there is another who, who thinks that their mother or their father doesn't love them. But that's not the truth. The truth is that you love your children equally. Isn't it so? You love them equally. But the revelation and the understanding is different. Because when you correct one, they think it's hatred. And when you correct the other, they appreciate it. Therefore also, 
in spiritual matters there are people who are born again who are children of God and they have right that right as much as anybody else has that right but their understanding is different they look at the circumstances of their life and they think that it is a description of the father's love for them they forget everybody has to begin somewhere Every one of us has their story. Every one of us has their background. Every one of us has circumstances, situations of rejection and people rising against you and family disowning you. Every one of us. And that is where the fight of faith comes in. You don't fight. We don't go chasing devils. The fight of faith is to continue believing that you are a child of God and you are loved. Even if people around you are showing you otherwise. Are we together? When there is no evidence. When there is nothing to show that you are blessed from the environment. The environment you live in is Christ. In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being. And you get your indications. You get your indicators. You get your signals from Christ. Not from neighbors. Oh my God. Not from neighbors. Neighbors will call fire on you. When you take them to Java, they start to call favor on you. They will keep on changing with seasons. Oh, Bishop Jake says something I like. You wear people like a scarf. Yani, you can put them down anytime because you cannot allow anybody to set the course of your heart. Are you hearing me? Oh, let me tell you something. You cannot allow. Get your consciousness from the word of God. Get your identity from the word of God. You are what God calls you. You are what Jesus says you are. Even if you don't know it, I am here to shout it out into your spirit that you are a child of God with full privileges and full rights. That is what I'm talking about. Full sonship. I am a full son. I am not a son three quarter. I am not a son 30 or 90 percent. I am a son fully. Amen. My God. Woo. My God, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Somebody just say, I'm a child of God. Ha has that ever penetrated into your heart? Has it ever become a reality into your heart? Has it ever become real to you? That the father doesn't see you as a stranger anymore. Let me continue with this. Somebody shout again and say, I'm a child of God. That is something we will say again and again. The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 12. As many as received him. How many of you have received him? You have received him. So you fulfill that condition. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So I want to teach you something. Sonship or a son is both born and given. And to us a child is, a son is given. So also for us, sonship is by birth yeah, and by confirmment. We are confirmed. We are given. And I will show you how. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we are born again. We are born of his spirit according to John. And his spirit and water according to John chapter 3. Verse 3 and verse 5. Then we are born of the word according to the book of Peter. Where the Bible says we have not been born again of a mortal source. Of, of, but of a, of a source that is immortal, of the incorruptible seed, the very seed and the sperm of God himself. So we've been born of the word and we've been born of the spirit, just like Jesus. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you and overshadow over, over, over you and you shall conceive and have a son. And yet the Bible says that that child was the word of God in the flesh. Are we together? So we have been Born. Somebody say, I am born again. It's called regeneration. 
I've been born anew. I've been born again. And that is what Nicodemus could not understand. How is it that an old man can go back into the mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, it's, it's not what you think. It is born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So it is by being born of water and of spirit that you have the ability to enter the kingdom of God. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. For you to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to have be, to, to be beyond flesh and blood. You have to go beyond flesh and blood and become a child of the word and a child of the spirit. Hallelujah. Please nod if we are together. At that point, of you being born. Again. You are also given. The power to become the sons of God. That power to become. Is what we call right. Okay. Now realize this. Sonship for us is not possible. Until first God recognizes us. As his children. Let me ask some men here. If you take a walk. I will not mention names. If you take a walk out there and a kid that you have never seen before comes to you running and saying, daddy, 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 daddy. What will you do? Will you say, ah, my lost son. <laughs> what will you do? You will either run or you will tell Mimi si Papayako. Are we together? Because what you need to understand, full sonship is not possible until the father acknowledges and accepts. And that is why the Bible says we have been accepted. Somebody shout and say I'm accepted. In the beloved, I am, have been accepted. When you believe in Jesus Christ, the father fully accepts you as his child. So it is not assumed sonship. It's not imagined. It is not presumption. I didn't just wake up one morning and say I'm a child of God. The father recognizes me as his child. And because he recognizes me as his child, the time I get born again, he sent his spirit in me to seal me, to stamp me, to put within me a mark that this is truly my child. Woo! Praise the name of Jesus. He sends his spirit to put a mark. I am walking on Thikaro, driving on Thikaro, but I have the mark of God. I am branded. My God, I am branded for God. And that is why if you know who you are, the devil knows who you belong to. He knows who you are. All you need to do is you know yourself. Do you know who you are? Because in the spirit, you have been branded. There is a seal. Ephesians chapter 1. There is a seal because you have become his, having believed the gospel. The gospel of our salvation. That is where it is. Ephesians 1.13. In him you also trusted. Is that you? After you heard the word of truth. Is that you? The gospel of your salvation. Is that what you heard? In whom also having believed. Have you believed? You are sealed. Give it to in the amplifier. Amplify it. You are sealed. Somebody shout and say I am sealed. That's what the Bible says. And have believed and adhere to and rely on him. You were stamped <laughs> with the seal of the long promised Holy Ghost. Yeah, you are not an uh, you didn't you are not an assumed son. It's not wishful thinking. 
Hey, hallelujah. It's not imagination. Because if it were imagination, there wouldn't be a stamp. If it was imagination, there wouldn't be a seal. But God says that he recognizes you. And that is what right is all about. There is no document that is valid if it is not signed and stamped. Praise the name of Jesus. How many business people are here? Would you honor a contract that doesn't have a signature? Would you honor a contract that doesn't have a stamp? Some of you are shaking your head. I have to know who who wrote this letter. I have to know the authority behind this document. And I've come here to tell you that the authority behind you is the name of Jesus himself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your Christian life has divine endorsement. It has divine endorsement. Your prayers have designed divine endorsement. When you lift up your voice and cry out, Abba, Father, you are not the only one crying out, but the spirit within you cries together with your spirit. There is a chorus within you. There is a concert within you. Two witnesses are, are joining into one, and they are saying, God is your father. Somebody shout and say, Father! That is what they wanted to kill Jesus for. And I know I'm upsetting people when I preach this. Amen. But he says, son, go make it plain. Break it down. Open it up. And hey, take me back. Take the gospel back to the church. Bring it back. Let them know what I am and what I am not. Let them know I bless them and not curse them. They cannot curse their own children. How do they think I curse mine? Now, Somebody shout and say, I'm a child of God. So he gives you his spirit as a stamp, a seal. Then he gives you his spirit as a witness. Yeah. My God, this is nice. This is nice. Is it nice? My God, I'm, 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 I'm about to start winding. I'm now realize this first John. I'm in John chapter 1 verse 12 in the Amplified. Let me calm down a bit because I'm feeling my, there's fire in my bones. There is fire in my bones. Somebody shout and say, I'm a child of God. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, privilege, and right to become the children of God. When you recognize your child, you give them your name so that when you go out there, you go out there for the parents' meeting. They actually call your child by your name. Are we together? In fact, there are documents that the first name to be written is the son name. What is your son name? They are not asking you for your name. They are asking you for your son name. In the spirit, I have a. He says you mention that name. <laughs> you mention that name, cripples walk. The blind see. People speak in other tongues. In that name, at the mention of that name, you can eat a drink poison or mercury and nothing will happen. My God, you know after that story came, all the many, many people, they stop taking sugar. You give them tea, say sugarless. <laughs> you ask them how many sugars, they say sugarless. But only for a week. After that, the craving overcame them. <laughs> Somebody shout and say, his name, his name. is powerful. powerful. That's our son name. <laughs> Are you not happy? Anyone who has a revelation of that name. When I go to school, my daughter, this eight-year-old, she's called Helsa. When she's called Helsa Gashero, she stands up and starts to walk. I don't stand. She goes. She knows who she is. 
You understand? And in our physical life, in our natural life, we have typologies. We have ladies here who go by the name Mwangi, Otieno, Onyango, Kamau. Are we to Musioka? But they are ladies. Why? It's a surname. Now, can you stand up? What's your name? Nancy Ndongo, who is Ndongo? Yes. <laughs> Nancy Ndongo. Why? Because she is his bride. So for us, we not only have a surname. Somebody shout and say, I'm the bride of Christ. So there is no way that this one can deny her his name. From the day they signed that document, she got the right to go and get her ID. My wife's ID was changed within two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. I said, from now, you are Pauline Gasheru. You are in Kuskia. Are we together? Because she is mine. You understand? And we have become so united. And he says that this marriage is an example of the life and the connection and relationship that the church has with Christ. There is nowhere this can be better than this. So when we see like this, this one is more perfect. If he can give her his name, then what is it that he has given us? Oh God. Go ahead and have your seat. Somebody shout and say, yeah. Your name is glorious. That is why we sang that song. Your name is glorious. When you call Mrs. Gashero, I don't stand up. Somebody else stand up. Somebody. Yeah. When I say Mrs. Kamau, Hapa kuna Mrs. Kamau, kwa wameenda? Haya Mrs. Kamau, one, kuna wengine? Mrs. Kamau! Monica Simama. Mrs. Kamau. The mister didn't stand up. We have been given that right and that name to operate in that, in this sphere. Sit down. Benson. Oh, oh, Paul. He is Kamau, the son name. That's father's name. And you also. Is Mrs. Njoroge. Okay, Mrs. Njoroge. <laughs> Mrs. Moturi. I stand corrected. Kuna Mrs. Mwangi apa. Kwa ni which ni majina gani? I'm trying to load. So you tell me which names. Eh? Mrs. Mogambi. Mrs. Otieno. Wapi Chantel. Ni Mrs. Otieno or Mrs. Onyango. Othiambo. Mrs. Odito. Hai kwa ni wako wapi. You guess. There is Mrs. Odito. Is it Odito or Odindo? Odindo. Amen. You get me. Right here on the earth, we've been given that right by Christ. He gave us his spirit. He has given us his name. He has given us his rights and privileges. Last Sunday, I told you, we are his next of kin. We are his brethren. We are the sons of God. And we are his bride. Wow. These are some of the thoughts that can keep you awake. When you meditate on them. And the thing is, when you're preaching the gospel, if you can push a point, a revelation, 
And that revelation be becomes real to that person. Miracles take place. Miracles take place when the reality of Christ becomes more real than the pain. Her mother decided to stand up. We were preaching. She decided to on that seat. Even before I called the altar call. There are realities in the kingdom of God that will nullify your circumstances. They will nullify your situations. If you can allow the situations to fade away and the greatness of Christ to be pronounced in your heart. To be more pronounced than the waves. To be more pronounced by the, than the trouble. Are we together? Oh my God, I have to finish this. Therefore, authority and power is given. Okay? A child can be born a prince. But there is a ceremony called coronation that gives them the authority and the power to act as a king. Although they are born, they have to be given the authority to operate as kings. And when the father or the mother declares who the heir is, that heir has to, be re to receive the authority to operate. And therefore, although we are born the children of God, God did not stop there. He has given us the power and the authority to live as his children, as sons. Hallelujah. This is the father recognizing you. Therefore, you are heavenly recognized, divinely recognized. Amen. You are recognized by God. In recognizing and accepting us as his children, he gives us the right and the power, the authority to become his sons, to live and operate as his sons. Have we been given that? So now, the Bible says in Romans 8 that creation is groaning, crying, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting for the sons to know who they are and operating the authority and the power they've been given. Creation is not groaning, waiting for the birth of sons. The sons have been born. The children of God have been born. Are we together? There it is. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs. Together until now. Why? Verse 23. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. I think it's verse 21, isn't it? Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the, what is it waiting for? The revealing, can you look at uh, New Living Translation? The revealing, that revealing is to manifest, to unveil. Amen. For the day that God will reveal who his children really are. And we together. Hallelujah. So you are already a child. It's not waiting for the birth. It's for the revealing. And there are things that will happen when we are revealed, when we are manifested, that will affect the entire creation. Hallelujah. Let me proceed with this. Now, a son of God is predestined for adoption of children by Jesus Christ. It is by Jesus Christ that we are predestined for adoption. Give me Ephesians 1 verse 5 in the New Living Translation. Ephesians 1 verse 5. God decided in advance 
to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure to bring us into his own family. That is what adoption is talking about. So reconciliation means bringing peace between us and God. Bringing harmony. But that doesn't make us children of God. Adoption is what brings us into his family. Are we together? And when you are brought into his family, you have rights. You have privileges. Hallelujah. Everything that a son should have, God has given you. Therefore, realize this, there is predestination. And you and me right now, that which God decided beforehand is happening now. So your life is not a chance. Your life is not by surprise. You are living predestination. That which was predetermined before time is becoming a reality in you on a daily basis. It's becoming real in you. Number one, you are already in the family of God. Do you believe that? So what you need to do is to discover what do you do when you're in the family? What is yours when you're in the family? How do you behave while you're in the family? What are your rights and privileges while you're in the family? Because now you are in the family. And know how you can take advantage of the privileges and the rights that God has given you. And I've already given one, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are adopted by Jesus Christ. New King James says that. It's by Jesus Christ only that we are adopted. By faith in him, according to Galatians 3, we become the children of God. There is nothing else that is able to bring people into sonship except faith in Jesus Christ. Mighty God, I thank you. Thank you because he simplified it. You can't buy it. You can't fast for it. Even if people fast and they ignore that simple fact of faith in Jesus Christ, nothing. There are matters that need to be settled in your heart as a believer. And I'm telling you, I took this book, I sat, sometimes I would sit down for eight hours. I would sit down for eight hours, read, underline, write notes. Cross-reference them. Because there are things you can't stand before people and preach until you're sure. And you cannot teach Christ if you're lazy. You can. You have to go scripture after scripture, book after book. And my intention of preaching these things to you is not to finish a sermon. It's to send you back to your Bible. So that you can go and cross-reference them. Sometimes when somebody reads or writes something and says, You, Pastor Morris, you're preaching this. I can tell that there are certain places in the Bible they've not read. Because there was a tragedy in Christianity where people stopped reading the Bible for themselves and they started reading what other people have written. And the error of those people became their errors. So right now there's a lot of copy-pasting. I am telling you, forget for the time when Jesus appeared to me for almost a year, my brother, I put aside my entire library. I put it aside and I would read this on my knees. I would read it and I would tell, oh God, make this book plain. Open it up for me. For the Bible says in those days, you will no longer speak to me in parables or dark sayings about the Father. You said you will speak to me plainly. Speak to me plainly. He did not disappoint me. If I teach you something, you don't find it here, don't take it. Don't believe it. Because by the time I stand here, by the time I stand here, I've gone through this. Are you hearing me? 
We, we need to change that culture. We need to be like the church in Berea. When they went to church and they were taught, they went back home and went through the Bible. Because how do you even debate with ignorance? You get me? You, you can't even debate. And that is why, please, please don't debate. Don't debate. I don't debate. I don't, I don't debate. Because you have people that have studied and others who have not. They took, they took a, 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 an article or a book and read that book. And whatever was written in that book, they didn't check. They didn't cross-reference. When I hear somebody say something, before I speak about it or against it, I first check it in the Bible. Who you ndio msemakweli? This is the one who is msemakweli. Are we together? And therefore, as members of this church, I tell you, befriend your Bible. Buy it. Buy it in various versions. In the electronic devices, I have 14 versions. And there are times I check a scripture again after another. Because I don't want to stand before him on that day and say, get what? All that preaching you did, you preached, but I was not in it. You preached, but I was not in it. Me, I want to preach Christ. I don't want to preach myself or other things. It's Christ we preach. Paul speaking, he says, him we preach. He is our message. And if we do not understand Christ as Christians, what do we know? If a believer doesn't understand Christ, if a believer doesn't know the love of God and Christ, then what do we know? What can we tell the world? Please, go get your Bible and begin reading it. Afresh. I know you've been reading. Hallelujah. Am I preaching right? Sonship is an act of pure grace. So when sometimes people talk about the grace of God, you know, I keep quiet. And some people say, let me just tell you if you don't know, they say, you know, when you preach the grace of God, you're giving people license to sin. Because they are thinking that the grace of God only focuses God's dealing with sin. They don't understand how can God go take a slave and make that slave his heir. So this thing is beyond just sin. It's the entire work of what God has done for us. And one of those, the highest, the epitome, the highest privilege of grace is sonship. Because it is only in sonship that you can claim everything that your father has as yours. Not as a friend, not as a servant, not as an acquaintance. Only a son can rightfully claim what belongs to their father. And that is the work of grace. So the work of grace is not about whether we ignore sin or not. Anyone who says that grace has to do with overlooking sin does not understand grace. It is the grace of God that teaches us to say no to unrighteousness. There is no way I've read in the Bible that the grace of God encourages you to sin. The Bible says the goodness and the kindness of the Lord leads you to repentance. The reason why we are not winning people to Christ is because of, of uh, uh, instead of telling them that God has opened up his hands and is waiting to receive you back to himself because the issue has been settled, we start to tell God, people how God is cursing them, how they cannot do this and how they cannot prosper, how angry God is, even you, 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 you yourself. Would you like to come near an angry God? It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. It is dreadful. So when people are not responding to the gospel, we are wondering, hey, who could stiff nakedness? Who could No, 
is because even you if you go to the office and your boss is upset and angry, when you start to know somebody is angry, unamwepuka, unapita mbali. And when you know that this person is willing to receive you, that he loves you, that your life is his, his agenda, you are his agenda. And that's why Paul said, come boldly. Come boldly before the throne of God. Not to expect him to beat you down. Sonship. How is it that God can take a Gentile and make them a son? And make them his dwelling place. My God is like the kings of the earth going to the slum. And saying I want the room in the slum. That's where I want to live. People would be up in arms. Yet, if you consider where you are and who you are, and that God chose you, that he might come and make his abode in you. What made you qualify as God's residence? What made you qualify as the dwelling place of God? A place where his eternal spirit can live. What did I ever do for him to make my body his temple? There is nothing we ever did. Because before we are ever born, he thought about making us his family. Before we ever sinned, he thought about making us his family. And when Jesus came, he came to deal with our sin and to clear the table for us becoming children of God. Are we together? Hallelujah. Therefore, let me finish in, in the next five, five, ten minutes. Let me finish. Do you give me that? Sonship means, if you're writing, you can write this. Sonship means me being a son of God, you being a child of God. What does that mean? It means that God has fully extended to us Christ's full grace and his complete parentage and guardianship. This means that God has fully, somebody say fully. fully. Meaning God's hand is not half stretched. God is not recognizing you as a son, Shingo Upande. Ish, ish. Which other time? 50, 50. Is full. <laughs> he has fully extended to you. He has fully extended to you the rights, privileges of a son. He has fully extended to you the grace of his son. For those who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that reign in life. Full grace. And number two, his complete parentage and guardianship. God is my parent. Right. Some of you, he's saying God is my father the same as saying God is my parent. <laughs> and sometimes we disagree on semantics. We play around with words. Wonasema not guilty. Bible it asema not guilty. Bible it asema justified. <laughs> Words. <laughs> so realize God has fully extended to us his full and complete parentage. We have the right to claim divine paternity. <laughs> Meaning we claim God as our father. He is mine as much as I am his. It's called dual ownership. He can't claim me if I don't have a right to claim him. For those who are married, let me use Minister Benson. The right that Minister Benson has to claim Monica as his wife is the same right that Monica 
has to claim Minister Benson as her husband. Do you agree? Yeah. What gave God a right to claim you as his son? Is what Jesus did. What gives you the right to claim God as your father? What Jesus did. If you understand, please wave. We're getting into deep waters, eh? Hallelujah. So God in Christ. <laughs> what is that? Pa parent, being a parent means. This is, is a complete, it's a simple word. It's really simple. It's just, you know. It means to bring up. To look after. To take care of. To raise. To nurture. The Bible says in Col Colossians 2.19 that we are nourished by Christ. We are nurtured by Christ. In Romans 11.18, it says we are supported by God. That God is the one. He is the husbandman. He is the vine dresser. He's the one who tends. He's the one who takes care. Praise God. Guardianship. Guardianship means is the one that protects and guards. That word guardian means to guard, protect, ensure the rights of a person are accorded them and given to them. So the Holy Spirit is the one that is taking care of the family of God on the earth. Are we together? Hallelujah. Now I finish with this. That I said there are two witnesses. Amen. Do you remember the first one? The first one is our spirit. Your spirit. Amen. Now you need to understand. That in natural circumstances. The child might not know who the father is. Until they are introduced to the father. Until they are told. I was told of a, of a, of a friend. Of a brother. Because of coming late and leaving early. Yeah, the, son, the daughter started to call to tell mom, Ule Mutu is <laughs> the <laughs> No, no, he's not, uh, he's not in America or wherever. He's just up at Nairobi. But by five, he's out. Comes by nine. After doing so for a few months, the kid was a bit small. Yeah? The kid started to call the father, Ule Mutu. Ule Mutu Amekuja. <laughs> And the mother had to say, Zule Mutu, this is your father. <laughs> this is your dad, and it was daddy. And the kid had to look at daddy. <laughs> okay? So in natural circumstances, normal circumstances, a child has to be introduced to the father. Or they grow knowing this, the father. Praise God. But in the spirit, when you are born, you are given his spirit within you. That by his spirit you know he's your father. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine a child is born and we all go to maternity. We gather ourselves, ten men. And we go to comfort that lady. Eh? And one of them is a father, the others are just well wishers. <laughs> and the kid who is young, who is five minutes old, opens his eyes. Says, mm -mm, mm -mm, Baba, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Something in him or her tells her. Mm? Something in him connects with this one. And says, Baba, Daddy. And that's what happens. That the spirit within us not only shows us who is our father and to call him our father, but he also shows us who is not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I know who I belong to. Shout it out and say, I know who I belong to. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. You also by the same spirit know what comes from your father and not. You will know this can be my father. This is not how my father handles me. This is not how my father deals with me. Because you have his spirit and his spirit connects and clicks with his spirit. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. 
Somebody shout and say yes. yes. Now the second spirit witness is his own spirit. Is his spirit, the Holy Ghost, the eternal spirit of God. He witness within us, our spirit. For example, if a man is called to court and say, who gave you this land? Instead of going through the hassle of trying to prove it's theirs, they just call the person who gave them. And the man stands up and said, yes, this is my land. I bequeathed it to my son. Or I gave it as an inheritance to my child. It ends argument. And the spirit of God is given to us so that whenever we claim anything, if there is a debate, he silences the debate. He says, yes, yes, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. He witnesses, he stands as your witness. Come as I do, and he says, it's true, he's my son. It's true, he can be healed. It's true, he belongs to me. It is true that I have redeemed him. Hallelujah. He stands in court as your witness. And that is what the witness means. That any time there is dispute of matters of faith and dispute on matters of redemption, that there is one who stands and acts as a judge and acts at the same time as your witness and he says, yes, they are forgiven. Yes, they are new creation. Yes, they didn't need to be healed. Somebody shout and say, yes. He says, yes, I adopted them. Yes, they are reconciled. Oh, hallelujah. So when I kneel down and I am praying, there is one who is bearing witness. There is one bearing witness. Yeah, you can give them that. Yes, that's their privilege. Yes, that's their right. Yes, they can walk in favor. Yes, they can experience grace. Yes, they can. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't have to beg. It is not my responsibility to convince my father that I deserve it. It's the responsibility of the witness within me to prove to the court of heaven that I have the right and the privilege to get what I am trying to get. <laughs> How can you convince him? How? By what you did? By your acts? By your merit? But there's got to be somebody who says, yeah. And that is what the Bible says. He is our advocate. He watches over your welfare. My book is coming out. You will read it. My book is coming out. Have you put something aside? Hallelujah. School is water. Praise God. It's a book you will need to buy. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? The spirit of God in you is the proof. Is the proof that you are his child. In normal circumstances, if you want to prove paternity, you do DNA. It takes complicated machines and a complicated procedure. To go through the DNA and find out who you, who, and especially when they become successful. When they become successful, you find four or three fathers come. Because success is, has many fathers. Failure is an orphan. When you're going through issues, no one claims you. But when your picture is on the news, people start to come. They call themselves your uncle. Others call themselves your father. You know, failure is an orphan. Success has many fathers. But in the spirit, all that drama is not necessary. In the spirit, <laughs> the child of God, the paternity can never be in doubt because the very moment he believes in Christ, he becomes a child of God. The spirit comes to dwell in him. So if you want to know who that person is, check the spirit. Romans 8, 9. For those who do not have the spirit of Christ, they are not his. They are not his. If you want to confirm who, ha who belongs to him, check the spirit. The spirit is our spiritual DNA. How many of you have his spirit? 
Rise to your feet. Now listen. I'll give you a minute. Please don't walk out. I said I want to make an announcement. Please just give me a bit. Listen. Listen. 